What's up gamers, it's your boy d -Slay, back here again with a Minecraft video. In this Minecraft video, we're doing a team builder slash game. I'll be pretty quick to team builder because the first draft I made was like 15 minutes. And no one wants to see that. But my team I'm playing is the PWC Season 5 champions, Luna, and he's pretty good. He's pretty good. Pretty good player. But he has a threatening team. I'm the Bewares, just in case the guys from League forgot for some reason. But I have a team that's extremely weak to a few bombs on this team, and I mean extremely. Like, hey, Dragon comes in, can almost kill anything in one shot. So Scarfy Dragon, I was terrified of. Which, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I did some testing. Oh, boy. Uh, Mega Heracross, again, nothing can really take any hits from it. I can't really switch into it. And uh, Nihelgo. Pretty good problem, pretty big problem, but I got some more answers towards that. Jirachi's a pretty good answer to it, and some of that would bring. Uh, Fortress can take a lot of hits, and these were the first four mons I really was scared by. I thought Hoopa was coming because of the Z-move, and Hoopa's just a heavy special attacker, so I was thinking maybe Hoopa. I was expecting Napoleon somewhat, but not 100%. Really, I was kind of worried about the last two spots, but the thing I'm most prepared for was a uh, was for Zydald. And uh, really, the six mod I just kind of had a balance. The six mod I was kind of covered for my team building, as I'll show. And we'll do that. We'll go on to the team building. Okay, and now we have my uh, team here. Sorry, I'm getting new. I'm still, I'm still very new to uh, YouTube videos, but we have my team here. We have my 300 Romans because I started naming stuff after Kanye because I wanted last minute nicknames. But I figured if he has a Helgo, I need something that can take a hit from the Helgo at plus one or just take any hits from this. Maybe take, predict the uh, rock move and come in and take it easily. And I use this on the ladder a lot. This is actually my answer to it because my team's super Nihelgo weak. But he has Earthquake to kill the Nihelgo, take a hit kill. HP Fire for the Fortress that might come in on it because I just didn't want to give Fortress any free rocks. Giga Drain for if he brought Rotom Wash, or if I just need some health back on any of the other Mons. Pretty safe uh, move, he didn't have too many resist to grass. Besides, uh, Whimsicott, and then I have, uh, Knock Off. For just Hoopa, and really just knocking stuff off in general. Which, hmm, that's interesting, knowing his sets now after playing the game. I brought my Choice Scarf Gengar, that was, to help me deal with Scarf Hey Dragon, because there's no way in hell that wasn't coming. And... He just hits everything on his team hard. I have Focus Blast to hit Empoleon, and I have Focus Blast to hit his Empoleon, and his, really everything on his team can't really take one. A few things can actually, I take that back. It has Hydra down, really, and I guess Empoleon, but mainly these two. Oops, oops, spoilers, spoilers. And then I had my Heated Morris. I don't like Heated Mode, I don't know why I named it this, but... This is this is the set I think I was proud of. I had Dragon Dance just in case uh, I could find an opportunity to Dragon Dance twice. I did some heavy damage to his team if I got Heracross out the way, because this thing without Heracross coming could pretty much sleep him. But he's smart, as you'll see. But I gave him Dragon Dance. I needed a way in case I did set up the deal with a Toxic uh, Fortress or a Fortress set. I was saying maybe Toxic. So I brought Z Incinerate. Z Incinerate does. Um, a decent bit. I'm assuming he wasn't a really heavy Spadef Fortress because that would make no sense versus my team because everything I have could basically almost oh, at least two hit KO it. So I brought Zenith and Rate that did I think around 88 to 100 damage. I can't remember the counts exactly and no one wants to see counts. No one wants to sit around watching that. That's boring. But then I had Dragon Dance. I had Earthquake just to hit basically Rotom. Well, I had Mole Breaker so I could hit the Rotom. I could hit the Nihelgo. Etc. Etc. Not a lot of, oh boy, but not a lot of uh, switch-ins to it. I had the uh, the answer to Heracross, or I would like to think the only answer I had. This uh, was max. This was a uh, enough speed to outrun Heracross by one point. If it was max speed Heracross, which it probably was. <coughs> the rest went into defense and attack. I mean health, just so I could take hits again. It was pretty good. I have put hard stamp on it, just that. I gave it wish protect, just so I could wish mons up, maybe, if I needed it. 
like I really didn't have a set for this. This was really just to take hits. Hard stamp was the flinch down stuff, especially the hair cross and U-turn just get momentum. I have Delphos the God. Had HP Ice because another Scarf Bond because I didn't know which one I wanted to be Scarfed and since Hydrate was a threat, I knew it was going to be Scarfed. I wanted to make sure my answers to it could kill it without having to worry about speed. So I gave him Flamethrower because retrospect I wish it was Fire Blast but I thought Flamethrower was fine. Anything that's going to take Flamethrower damage. Anything that takes Fire Blast damage is going to get hurt from that. Put Psy Shock just in case. I don't know, I'm a big fan of Psy Shock over Psychic because if it's a uh, Spa Death Mon, Psy Shock hits the defensive side, so I'm always a fan. The Dazzling Gleam because that hits a hair cross switch, it hits most everything on his team somewhat. Most times at Fortress, but and he's not going to switch in Fortress on Delphos the God. And Hidden Power Ice for Zygod because I had Hidden Power Fire on two Mons, so I need something to kill uh, Zygod. Zygod Dog, there you go. And then I brought my Pilf Pokemon I like to follow. Just kind of a basic set, so a def set. This was for um, taking hits from like maybe Rotom, Whimsicott. I had defensive answers, so in uh, Tangrove, besides, besides Heracross. So yeah, I, mean, I wasn't going to stay in Heracross. So I put Nature's Madness, because just that's like my favorite move in the game, probably this meta. Just because Nature's Madness is always really good. Surf the Hit Fortress, and. Honestly, just stab moves defog to get away hazards because if I got hazard stat, that could be bad for my uh, weak little Delphops. And with that, I'll just go into with the match. And we're gonna make sure it fits still. And I'm still recording. Cool, cool, cool. We're getting good at this. And let's begin. We'll put it on normal. I send in this. I want to, like, maybe I just scout what he's gonna do just for funsies. And he vault switched. And I was like, okay, I'm going to wish because if he Volt Switch again, I'm in a good position if he burns me, which I don't know why I wasn't thinking about. It's not too bad, but I wasn't really thinking straight, I won't lie. Him burning me was kind of bad because that way I couldn't break a hair cross sub later on because I was expecting a subset because I did some testing with my friend, uh, Colton, and in the testing, let's go ahead and say this real quick, pause it. I think he only lost one, and that was because he forgot to put speed IVs on his Starfire Dragon. That was the only one I won. So I went like 0 and 5 in testing. And that's where I ended up with this team. I tested a lot, and ooh, oh boy. Just wasn't good testing. But yeah, I wish. I passed at this because I knew Volt Switch wasn't going to do much, and he didn't really have anything I was too afraid from switching. After running some counts, I actually did not Oko Hydreigon with Focus Blast, which, which I sent it in, so I was kind of worried. But let me uh, commentate the battle. Um, he sends in Fortress. I'm just like, do I want a Shadow Ball or do I want HP Fire? I was like, HP Fire is get down to one health. Might as well unswitch out afterwards. But he actually stays in. <coughs> well, he stays. Oh yeah, no course. He stays in. He stays in, takes it. And then this is where I turn the timer on, turn five, ten minute timer. But uh, I send in this. He switched out. In retrospect, this was a very bad switch in because it if he put in hair cross. I was dead, but I didn't figure he was going to hair cross. I was figuring the Rotom, especially after HP fire. I paid more attention to my turns. He was light screen. This, uh, this got me. This really threw me off. That massive 3% damage. So after this, I was, I was actually pretty worried. I thought he was going to go straight hair cross and sub up on me. So the only answer I really had to this was, um, I think, let me see. So... He has light screens up. I want to defog those away. I have a full health Tapu Fini, so I send Tapu Fini. He will wisp again. Smart move to burn. Maybe some of my knockoffs and stuff won't do any damage, but he does that. And he hits. Oh, he's he's Brookhaven ba uh, Bennett's guys. So we we did it. We we figured it out. We solved the mystery. But knowing he's gonna switch, I defog. Get away the hazards. Get back a little health. That Volt Switch did like not too much actually. For super effective since I'm pretty high in spadef. I switched out to the answer to Tangrowth and this is where it gets a little uh I think this was a pivotal part of the game. This could prob this probably decided oh well let me rephrase. This made it so I did not lose. He sends a uh, oh he made a Digimon reference too I think. Carlos sent me a really funny uh Digimon nickname when he was drunk it was it was a good nickname five out five but here, let me go over the play. In testing, sub Heracross beat me every single time. Every time I had Tangrowth out, it subbed. 
I actually misplayed uh, and I forgot to switch it back to HP flying. Or I think I was debating it and I just decided HP flying was the best, but I kind of didn't. Yeah, I forgot. That's the term. So I didn't have HP flying, so I had HP fire. And I was like, I'm pretty sure this will break it. Luckily it does, so he doesn't get a sub up on me. Which was really nice, because if he got a sub up on me, minimum, I think, two mons died. Especially since he burned Shirachi. So I'll probably have to get rid of all my wind tons and Gengar or Tapu. Tapu Fatsu. But no one he'll pin missile. I send this in just to basically die. And it doesn't die. It has 31 health left. The next move, I decide to U-turn because I didn't figure he was going to stay on the second move. No, I hard stamped. I hard stamped. I hard stamped thinking he might try stepping up again since I was burned. And I thought, you know, 15% damage is 50% damage done. I'm not sure how much I would have done, but I was assuming it was somewhere around the like 15% range. So I sent that in. I protect just to see what he's going to go for. He goes for U-turn. I'm almost 100% sure he's Starved. I was just, you wouldn't run anything but Starved versus me. So I was like, if you're Starved, that's cool. I can U-turn on out after you because that's not going to kill since I'm I am mean, I'm defensive. And he switches out, sure enough. He switches to Whimsicott. Your opponent almost be a little too slow pace. But he sends in Whimsicott. I'm okay with that. I sent in my Delphos of God. This is where I wish I had Fire Blast because Fire Blast would have uh, O-coded anything that came in almost or two-hit KO'd anything that came in not named Rotom. And okay, I'm, I, I'm bad commentating. Good God. It would have done good damage to four of his Mons and probably O-code uh, Whimsicott but I only have Flamethrower so it wouldn't have O-code. I send in this again. I skipped some terms but we'll go back. Okay, I go for a Fire Blast. Uh, I have a flame thrower, knowing he's gonna switch out. I send in uh Tapu Fini. He sends in Rotom. Rotom's not good for me since he can just full switch on me again. But I let him do that because I didn't want him getting momentum on hair cross mainly. I don't want my other mons taking damage. And now I nature's madness because I was kind of expecting a uh, fortress and I was gonna get down to twenty five and then surf and maybe heal it. But he does that instead, which is fine. I send Tangrove, he doesn't really have an answer. He tell wins. I was terrified here because Tailwind, he sends in Heracross, he gets three kills. I was terrified. He U-turns, it's coming true. I was just terrified, as I said. But he sends in this as a sack first, wasting one t turn to Tailwind. I was ecstatic because I went for HP Fire to hit this for like 30%. And now here it comes. I got to try playing around this. I send in Tapu Fini, knowing he'd go for the pin missile and I could live one pin missile because this is my best bug resist on my team. And my only, but a hey, Lamal. But I resist that. And I just switch out here. Sack the uh, 18 health Jirachi because I figured uh, Tapu Fini. You know, honestly, that was just a bad play. I don't know why I did that. I could just sack it. Wouldn't have mattered the sack. But now I send Delphos the God. I go for Dazzling Gleam him because I was expecting him to expect the Flamethrower. And. I thought Dazzling Gleam would be the best because if he swings to Side Dragon, it just dies. And if I used uh, Psy Shock, it wouldn't have. In retrospect, Psy Shock was the play, but we'll see if that damage comes back and bites us. Uh, I send in my Gengar. Gengar just gets a kill here with Sludge Bomb. It would two hit KO almost anything. Get crit. Sorry. It probably mattered. He sends Hula Hoopa. I have Max Spadef, almost Tangrove, so AV take this for days. 34, he gets a Spadef drop. I did not care about that, but Sindel Beam, that Spadef drop almost cost me this mod. And one thing I didn't notice, I didn't knock off an item. That was actually just knock off killing at 100%. I know it was four times effective, but still was not expecting that at all. And uh, this is where... Things get interesting. I was kind of worried. So I was like, oh, that's why I said I'd go pee, but I was just really calcing. <laughs> okay, I did some calcs here. I wanted to just get this down because I thought my best bet of winning was sludge bombing and everything. I didn't really think I had a chance here, so I just went Z incinerate to take that down 40% because I did my calcs. I had, I'm running some spit attack in here. I didn't say that team builder, but I'm running some spit attack to Oko Fortress and... It would have done a decent bit. He does for a light stream when I dragon dance, which I was sad about because I was like, oh god, if you miss this will wisp, I win. He doesn't miss, 
which I'm happy about. Hacks are dumb. Except for you, Hatchers. You're not dumb. And I dragon dance again because I'm like, you can't really touch me. What do you have? He has Hydro. Hydro does 27. I have, en I, I have enough to dragon dance one more. I got a little greedy here. I was also trying to wear off his light screen after I died. He misses that Hydro. And uh, it's not nice. That's not good. But I would have done massive. I would have done the damage I needed at this point. And I Earthquake there. Because he switches off. I finally decided to Earthquake and attack the woods in front of me. I think I was probably. I might have actually killed. Because I think plus one did like around 50 to 60. And plus two. Let's see. Yeah, I play, I'm playing it's plus four. So I think I would have okayed. I go for. Okay, but as I was saying though, I killed Hydrate on nothing there. I Dragon Claw his Mega Kabu Terry mod. Because I just need to kill a Sludge Bomb. Okay, and so at this point in the game, I ran a decent bit of calcs. Oh, well, actually, that's that calls him. Let's see. I do, I do 45 here. My calc, he sent me a set. I should have done 44 max. I don't know how, but calc gave me 45. Putting my browns down too, so I, we're, we're just leaving it at that. But I did 44, so he's going to put line screen up as he should. And it makes me do about half, so I should be doing about 22 every hit. But here I get a crit. It mattered. Yeah, it mattered. I had a lot of luck that could have went on my side, and that was one of the scenarios. I got pretty lucky, I won't lie. But this did 44, and with this doing 44, uh, the next one would have done 22 after that. Light strain, it should have done about 22 or so, let's just say half. And he would have been down to 34, up 6, 40. And then side shot did about 20 apiece. But... And I lived uh, one hydro, so the scenario was he had hit three hydros in a row. If he had hit three hydros in a row, I had to not crit three moves in a row. And I had to not poison, so that's three twenty percent that I could have got. There's a two thirty percent I could have got, and about four six percent I could have got that would have won me the game. I got one of the six percent, unfortunately. I mean... I'm not going to do the math, but I had a lot of scenarios where luck could have bailed me out, but, well, luck could have bailed me out. Luck bailed me out. I definitely got a little bit lucky, because I think he would have lived, like, on 8% after, if I just kept straight up attacking. But nonetheless, that was a good game versus a good opponent. You can kind of see why he won PWC Season 5. He's very methodical on his attacks, and he counts a lot, which is good. If you look in the chat, there's lots of uh, timer conversations, because I kept turning the timer on. But he, he he's a good player. And I hope he gets to the finals when we have a rematch. So maybe no hats this time. And that'll be it. Thank you guys for watching my first PWC video. Peace.